week on Valley Spotlight, you saw Mike. He was grilling with Jeff and Chef Mark. And he was. those, I mean, first of all, the rubs that you guys created. We oh, thank cannot you. Thank wait. You. I can't wait to see him. To see what people's reaction will be to using them in their own kitchen. Well, I've been an amateur barbecue guy, and then I was very fortunate to work with Guy Fieri <laughs> and come up with this barbecue Bible for him and his his barbecue team, so the Motley Q. So this is like, you know, if you're thinking it was just an idea that these guys had, no, this is like years and years of oh, all it takes of those years. things to come together, and we're very lucky to have been able to feature that. But as you move through the summer and you're doing all this grilling, it's wonderful to have some different side dishes. Yeah, that not the are same like, old thing. Right. I, you know, you see macaroni salad, you see potato salad. Well, we're going to do a macaroni salad. It's just going to be a little bit different. But, yeah, when I look at these ingredients, I mean, this is something well, that... Well, familiar, but then, you know, the kicker on the macaroni salad is we're using horseradish aioli. So Hello, it's got everybody. a little bit of pump to it. Hello, everybody. It's going to take it back a little bit, but it's not too spicy. I, Make I, it as horseradishy as you want. Which way do you want to start? Because I feel right like left, left to right. say, let's, let's start over here because this, this, this broccoli. So we're going to do a broccoli and kale salad. It's kind of like an old school southern low country soul food, the broccoli carrot raisin salad in kind of a poppy seed dressing. But you know me, I like to flip everything on its corner, on its heel, and try to do it my way. So if you hand me that big bowl, I can and we're just, you're just going to start throwing in ingredients, except for the dressing. Can I have the kale first, please? Okay, kale first. So you want to take some kale, get it, you can already get it at your local grocer, and just make sure it's clean, sand free, put it in there, tear it into little bite sized pieces. Then we're going to add the broccoli. We actually did just a quick little blanch on this just to take some of the crunch off because we have a lot of crunch, other crunchy components. Okay. All right, so give me the uh, pomegranate arrows. Look at how beautiful these are. I mean, these this is just says summer all over with the pomegranates. Wow. And then we're going to do some Sicilian golden raisins. Do you want all of them? All of them. Let's okay. do it. Let's do it. <laughs> I learned my lesson once. Yes. Okay, these raisins. Yes, you beautiful. want to take the raisins when you get them out of the package, and you want to plump them in a little bit of hot water just so they soften up a little bit. Okay? You say they come out really nicely because usually when yes. I open up a package of they're, raisins, well, I'm they're like, dried, they're preserved. So the carrots. Okay. And then we're going to get to one of my favorite ingredients. You know me, I love Mexican Southwestern ingredients. Yes, you so do. So we're going to get some toasted pepitas, which are pumpkin seeds. Okay, some toasted pepitas. So we're going to have crunchy, we're going to have soft, we're going to have salty, we're going to have sweet. So all your senses. And then we're just going to use Bistro's apple cider vinaigrette. A little bit of whole grain mustard, apple cider, a little agave nectar. And you just want to pour that in and we want to use the whole thing. Just, just you want to lightly dress the salad because the more you dress the salad, the more it's going to wilt. So and I might need some more, but look at those colors coming together. Just my absolutely love insane. This. this is such a, oh, my mother would love this salad too. Yes. Okay, I'd say just a little bit more. A little bit more. Maybe like two more tablespoons. One, two. Mm -hmm. And then if you want to add some fresh ground black pepper on top of this, some sea salt or some regular salt, it's beautiful. And now we're going to plate this because we're going to be out. Three for me. Sorry. Three for you. Okay. So now we're going to plate this on, you know, of course, our friends over at Steelite Folio, one of their new products that's just come out for buffet lines, for home enthusiasts. You can use this. It's absolutely gorgeous. Kentucky heat. You can go right out. You can make a stew of this and go right out of the oven onto the serving table with an underliner on it. And I'm just going to cut in front of the camera real quick because you don't want to forget all those beautiful things on top. Oh my just gosh, like that. Mark. Doesn't that look great? Wow. Look at that. How summery is that? Absolutely. And it's going to be delicious. Perfect. Okay, we're going to go next. Okay, what do you want and to do? And you're going to do the stirring this time. Okay. Maybe so we're going to do a take on here. your favorite pasta salad in the summer. I love bow ties. I've always loved bow ties. Farfalle in Italian, it means butterflies. So we're going to add that. We're going to pre cook those to al dente. We're going to take some roasted sweet potatoes. I thought it was chicken. For no, a that's roasted sweet. <laughs> chicken wouldn't be bad in there. Some diced red and green peppers. Wow. Some diced red onion. So again, you're getting different textures, different crunches, and I always love scallions. Who doesn't? But now we're going to kick it up with a little bit of that different aioli, and this is a horseradish aioli. So we're going to put, put some of that horseradish aioli in there, and then you're just going to mix it up real well. This is beautiful. And it's delicious as well. Oh my goodness. Am I, am I mixing? I think you're mixing quite well. Am I mixing? Am I mixing? Yes. This is my first time back in Pesto's right. Test here, Kitchen I'll, I'll in a very long time. I'll bring this to you time. and you pour into here. All right. Really? Yes. Mark? Okay. Here we go. 
Do they do There's it? There's no oh, rules, shit. Lauren. We haven't had rules since we started oh, this show. Okay. okay, sorry, camera. We're out of camera. I'm sorry. Do right like now. Ron's like, Lauren, come on. Nobody <laughs> All right, I'll take that, that out of your hands. Bring that other salad over, and now you can taste them both. Look at how beautiful. Now, if you wanted to put this. again, if you want to put something else, your own little spice on top of there, please add anything you want to to that. We have these two beautiful salads. I feel like this is something that, like, if you let it set, the flavors are just going to get better and they better. They are, and you can do this the day before. You don't want to do the green salad right the day before, even though kale is a very rigid and tough green. You would want that to toss last minute. How is that? Unbelievable. The sweet potatoes, the horseradish, the peppers, the crunch. I think you're going to like that a lot. So good. And how about this one? All right. Make sure you get a goodie part. I got to get a goodie part. <laughs> <laughs> Those are like chef terms, goody part. Explosive, right? I honestly don't know which one I like more. Right. All right. Dieting, not dieting. I'll be doing this one for a little while. I'll be honest, my pants don't fit. Mark, absolutely amazing. We'll be right back with a little bit more to it. Well, we did some wonderful side dishes. These they are came out amazing, didn't they? Between now and like when we were just filming, I ate half the bowl. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Which one? The healthy one or the unhealthy one? The unhealthy one. <laughs> the unhealthy one, of course. But well, you can make that healthy to a point. You know, they have a lot of great new pastas out there that are made out of different, whether they're made out of legumes or whatever. I don't need yeah. that. I, okay. want, I, want, I want it just like that. It's, it's kind of hard not to eat pasta the real way. Just looking at this corn and these plates, you don't even need to do anything to it. Well, the Kraft and Green Apple, the color profile this is going to have when we're all done, it's just a gorgeous plate. So Again, beautiful. Again, just highlights the food, makes the food even look better. It looks like we actually grilled the plate to match the right. corn. Right. I was going to say, it's like they made it to be matched perfectly with exactly. um, your new version of the elote. You know, me, elote, Mexican food, you know, I'm, I'm huge on it. So I wanted to do, maybe people don't like the Mexican ingredients. So we figured we'd... So I'm going to do an American version okay. of it. And so we're going to take this corn that I actually, you can fire grill it or you can deep fry it. I deep fried this because I wanted it to taste like a little bit of popcorn. Okay. okay so now <laughs> we're just going to liberally baste that with ranch dressing that we make here at Bistro 1907. Go ahead and brush. Do a little okay. painting. Okay. Just get it all over. Make it happy. We get to paint at home with Bean Bean, and then we get to paint at Beast. She's going to be sad she missed this <laughs> Yeah, today. she will be. Well, we'll have to have Sabina eat the world again. Yeah, so you know? she would eat this well, like... On my next trip, I'm going to bring her back some really cool candy. Sounds good. All right, good. so now I'm going to take our barbecue dust, our St. Louis Red. Okay. And I'm just going to liberally dust that on top of it just like that. And you can go ahead. Mm -hmm. The higher up, the better it spreads on the product. Oh. You don't have unevenness. Oh. So the higher the dust, <laughs> higher the dust. Yeah. Okay. Now, <laughs> I'm going to kick it up with some chives. You can use scallions, green onions, if they're right out of your garden. It'll be amazing. A little bit of green onion on there. And then oh. because everything's better with what? Bacon? Bacon, baby. We're going to put some bacon lardons on top of that oh corn. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Now, I'm going to go a little crazy on mine because I'm gonna try something here. I'm gonna put a little bit of spicy barbecue on top of it, and that's gonna be mine, and we're gonna do a taste off. Okay. Hold on, I gotta put a lot of bacon on there. A lot of bacon. I gotta put a lot of bacon Look on there. Look at that. Oh, baby. Now, Look there's a lot. This. So this is American barbecue grilled uh, deep fried corn. Okay? <laughs> I shouldn't be this excited about it, but uh, I am. I'm excited about it. All right, you ready? All right, I'm gonna give it a taste. Okay. You ready? Uh-huh, three, right. two, one. It's like ridiculous. You look good. You look better. <laughs> you look good, man. This, this is, is so, so unbelievably good. Mark. The ranch, the dill in the ranch, the spices in the ranch, and then the barbecue dust, and then the bacon crumbles. I think we just hit a home run. Are you still talking? I think I'm still talking. I okay. think I, my mom would say, wipe your mouth. But barbecue no is supposed point. to be messy. There's no point. There's no problem gonna... when you eat barbecue. You just get in there with two hands, two feet. You hanker up. You take a bite. And it's delicious, isn't it? Cheers to you, my friend. Cheers, everybody. Oh, we're going to have more on this um, lovely uh, cheesecake. Just don't forget, knee-high 4th of July. And then we're going to have some beautiful local corn from right here in the Mahoney Valley. So good. We'll be right back with more. And I'm going to wipe my face, I promise. <laughs> Well, as promised,
promised, I wiped my face off and uh, Mark, through the magic of television, made two more of those lovely elote ears of American corn. American elote. American elote. So. You have, it's on the new menu, I hope. It's not going to be on the new menu, but we are going to do that. I think we should do a companion piece to the elote. One American style and you one Mexican style. You have to do it. I think so. If you ask for it, well, you'll you'll well, know that they they're going to You're going to know when we start like. running corn because our friends out at Molnar Farms, and you mm -hmm. know how much we love our friends we out at do. Molnar Farms. In my opinion, the best corn in the world. Yes, I said it right here on In the Test Kitchen. Molnar Farms has the best corn in the world. It's only Sorry, everybody else. <laughs> Lutz isn't selling it this year, so we don't have to worry about it. <laughs> oh, and Lutz was phenomenal. <laughs> he worked very good. I'm just joking. I'm just yeah. joking. All right, we're going to go back to your childhood. One of your favorite desserts ever was? Well, mom growing up, you know, we had that pistachio thing that we used to eat <laughs> when we were kids. Like, what was it called? It was a like strawberry a strawberry shortcake. No, no, pistachio like parfait or something like that. Oh, you're very lucky. I didn't have any of that. I well, you're it. also in Chicago. <laughs> so, secondly, strawberry shortcake. Whether it was my mom's house, my mom and dad's house, my grandmother's on both sides. You know, my grandmother, uh, they grew their own strawberries, so that was even more of a, a slice of heaven. So, our pastry chef Matt. What he did was he took what everybody's favorite dessert is, cheesecake. Yeah, baby. And then he put homemade shortcake on top of it and fused with a homemade <laughs> strawberry preserves. Okay? This is like a heightened, yeah, elevated a, level yes, of strawberry shortcake. So we're going to take some vanilla bean whipped cream and, you know, vanilla bean and whipped cream just in heaven with those two things. And we're just going to drape that because you cannot have enough whipped cream with dessert, right? Look at how Especially perfect Especially when that it's is. homemade. And if you want to put the strawberries on top, put the strawberries on top. I feel like I just want you to do it okay, because I I'm feel gonna like do I'm just going to ruin you it. You are not. I feel like I you am. You are not. So we're just going to put the strawberries and that's going to ooze that dollop of whipped cream all over it. Is this on the new menu? Uh, we're serving this currently. We're oh serving this currently. Gosh, and just Mark. a little fresh mint and mint surrounded my home growing up because my mom brought it home from mm -hmm. grandma's house. So when you cut the grass on the side of the yard, it smelled so good. And it's a really good way to freshen up your bottle of water. Yeah. And getting back to our friends at Steel Light, this brand new plate by Maham just sets the food off unbelievably. She's a talented, talented artisan, and it's amazing to see Steel Light take all of these talents from around the world and then we get to understand not just their story if you follow them on social media sure but then to be able to see these chefs that we work with so closely you know it all comes together and it's like the magic minds of yes. the world coming yeah. to and, make you know, this just happen. again distress you know you have this artisan plate that has the durability so to it perfect. and plus as a food server when you're grabbing as a food server because it's terracotta you have that little rough edge on yeah. the bottom and you can really really walk around with it easily but look how beautifully that that shows. Mark, but this is one of the new things we're featuring. And you have a new menu, and people we do are have a new always menu. so excited to see. Wait till that. you taste the new waffle. A mac and cheese waffle, Frico style, fried chicken on top, spicy barbecue sauce, and our famous Ikema coleslaw. Did you make that just for Fred? I think I did. did Fred's, you make like, it Fred's just like my Freddy? waffle. He's like. Him and Snoop Dogg, I think, are kindred souls because yeah. they both love fried chicken and waffles. Yes. I don't think there's a fried chicken and waffles in this entire area that Fred hasn't tried or chicken sandwich, but wow. I have to admit, uh, yours are phenomenal. And if you put some mac and cheese, you put mac and cheese in the waffle? Mac and cheese. So we put cheddar cheese down on the waffle iron, mac and cheese on top of that, more cheddar cheese, and then we smash it down, and then it gets bubbly, happy, and crispy. Crispy on the outside, creamy on the inside. I don't even know what to say. What else is on this new menu that There's we're so excited about? We'll see. We're coming out. Again, you know, the crab avocado salad. But we also have a new, for everybody that's thinking of eating healthier, that likes lighter things, we have a wonderful, wonderful salmon burger. Oh, exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a salmon burger on brioche with frise, and it has a, a wonderful um, pine, toasted pineapple marmalade on top of it. It's really, really good. You know Sabina Rosalina. She'll be eating that in yes. minutes. Um, always Beast Start 1907 right here in downtown Youngstown. Uh, follow Mark online. He is always doing something. So we try. You are uh, a gift to us here on Valley Spotlight. Uh, no, and no, the I'm, no. I'm, I'm blessed to be here. <laughs> And I'm blessed that I have the team behind me in the, in the kitchen that makes yeah. me look so good. They are pretty great people. Oh my goodness. Oh look me, at this. Oh me, oh me, look oh my. Look at the size of this. Cheers. Right, cheers. The top of it brings you back to a picnic that you we all had. I can't even believe this. And then the cheesecake, just the creaminess binds it all together. Uh-huh. My God. Mm. So good. I know.
Let's have a food fight with this. 